Hello, family. Thank you for coming over to the house tonight. And just kick off your shoes and relax your feet. Party on down to the SKB. We're kicking. Just kick it. Just kick it. Okay, you don't come to another episode where we're going to be asking the question of... Why are you telling my business? Don't be telling my business. Hmm. Why not? Because a can-can and a can-can, a can-can, a can-can, and a wheel. Now we're off to... Hello, everybody, and thank you for coming back to the channel. Well, <clears throat> we have to do another recap on the Real Housewives of Atlanta, okay? We don't care what, uh, <laughs> we just know it's season, thir season 14, episode 13, okay? 14 and 13, we're just going to go like that. And we're going to be talking about Sheree, because she really have nothing to really give us. Uh, why did we have her in Jamaica? Why did we have Sheree in Jamaica, guys? Okay, we need to speak on that because Sheree gave nothing, 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 and I do mean damn nothing. Okay, to me, Sheree, your peach look like it may be in danger, girl. Once again, little lady, because you're not bringing anything to the stage, okay. You give us hopes, dreams, and you bust them all in the same <coughs> breath, honey. Where is she by Sheree? It's in somewhere in the Sahara Desert. Okay? Maybe getting water. Mm -mm. Uh, see, they bother me again when I'm trying to do my uh, recap review. But Sheree, again, same question. Why do we have you back? I mean, we constantly get... It's just like a yo-yo. We throw you out, you come back. We throw you out, you come back. It's almost like a fishing pole where we just throw it out in the lake with our bait, hoping we would get something back in return, but we still get shit's feel. Okay? Mm. To me, it's like you shouldn't even really got paid for uh, yesterday or Sunday night's episode because you didn't contribute anything to the, what do you call it, the uh, explosion that took place at y'all dinner. Okay? I just don't understand why we have you here. Every episode we've seen you uh, on, it's just like we're treading water. Even when you kind of try to get into it with Drew, but <clears throat> it's just how it is, okay? I wish Fatum had never touched uh, Drew's pocketbook because I feel that was the straw that broke the camel's back when she did that. And it gave leeway for Drew to say, I don't trust her. I don't like her. Uh, she got people stalking me. She's pulling up my uh, my past, my history. Then she had my pocketbook, taking it in now to charade to, go to do God knows what. And they listened. And they got rid of Fatum. But she was definitely uh, forced to be reckoned with. I just wish she hadn't did that so she could be on the show uh, giving you hell. All right. Okay. Moving on from there. We had Mayetta. Okay. Mayetta, I love your husband. He's a good man. Seems like he's a good man just out of first, uh, we call it, uh, visuals he was giving me. Seems like he's very supportive of your career, whatever that may be. And he's a loving dad. Okay. Kind of reminds me of Buffy Purcell's husband. Okay. I'm like, is he a therapist? Is he a social worker girl? Because with this group of women, you're going to probably have to counsel the men because I'm pretty sure they brains were fried after this last episode. And, you know, <laughs> is he a bottle shot caller girl? All right, because he's a looker. He's a looker, Monietta. Okay, we're done with Monietta. We go to Sonya. I don't know what Sonya thought she was going to get mayhem. Okay. I didn't think she did. Did she really think it through that she was going to go on a vacation with this these group of women and not something pop off? Oh, oh, oh. Sonya, you really are lost, okay? Seems like you lost control of the whole dinner that night when Candy and Marlo were going back and forth with a little side of tart stirring the pot, okay? And uh, I don't know why you were calling yourself trying to set up Kenya. Once y'all touched down and got in the little golf carts, y'all saw somebody together, you and Kenya. And you thought you would 
make up a rendezvous or I meet you at dinner at two type of thinking going on. And on the other side, Candy was uh, uh, hollering and screaming that she was hungry. I'm like, Candy, pack some snacks. Get some Lunchables in your lunch pack, okay? Have that pocketbook have something in there for you to either drink and eat or both. Because you're just not good when you're hungry. Hangry is more so the word. Hangry. You stay on your pills, your weight loss pills you got going on. Because Lord knows if you weren't doing anything. Cause, well, we don't think you're doing any exercise. I, I, don't, I don't know, Ken. I don't know. But you need to have your snacks ready. And, and your uh, luggage and in your pocketbook. So you don't have to be hangry all the time. Okay, now Sonya, I don't know why you thought Kenya needed a man on this particular trip. I really don't know where you came with that. Because Sheree didn't bring no man. Oh, I got this thing stuck in my compression socks. Sheree didn't have no man. Okay, Marlo didn't have no man. She had a florist or some guy. I don't know, was he gay? Or was he going to pick you flowers every day that y'all were in, um... Jamaica okay to freshen up your room who knows maybe he needed a trip you owed him money and both of it paid his debt that you owed to him who knows who knows okay but that's it for Sonya okay we got Kenya we got Kenya she's drinking a Red Bull I never saw that coming never saw that coming never thought she was a Red Bull type of woman okay then we got Kenya blushing it's a long time since we seen her blushing at that little man that it seems like y'all just pulled him out of nowhere had him sign an NDA clause and uh sent him on his merry way especially when y'all start well you really didn't get into the argument but Candy and Marlo was going at it like it wasn't nobody business and that man just ran on up out of there he said nope <laughs> I cannot be seen with this mess right here. So it was nice knowing you, Kenya, but I got to fly on out of here, okay? He pretty much left, showed sure it, left Kenya high, high and dry. Left that table. I don't think we saw a smoke coming from its behind. But anyway, it just is what it is, okay? I think that was the old setup shit anyway. But um, I kind of missed the drunk Kenya. Uh, but hey. We'll probably get her again before the season ends. Now we go on to Drew. Okay, Drew's talking to Ralph about his book. I'm like, girl, if you don't stop talking about oh, that book and this, that, and the third. Like, do you have not a storyline? Well, you had one while Fatoon was on there. And somewhat you and uh, Sheree Spar here and there. But I'm beginning to think, why do we have you here? Okay, you're cute. We heard you could sing. But what else are you bringing? And Drew, you know you ain't shit. Because how you going to let your husband be out there telling a story about he's writing a book. And it's about adoption or being a stepfather to uh, your children or whatnot. And then... They get in an argument and you won't have nothing to say. Do you think it could have been nice for you to break up the argument between Marlo and Candy before they really start hitting at each other's kneecaps? Ha, ah, Drew, Drew, I told you, you ain't shit. All right, then we got the assistant that comes over to Drew's house to uh, talk with um, her husband, his gaslighting self, about the book and this, that, and third. Of course, you come around the corner with some cheese and crackers or whatnot, and you're trying to get an eye feel of this lady, okay? Even when she got up to give you a hug, you were looking out the side of your neck. You were looking at Ralph like, is this woman for real? Is this woman for real? Okay, so I, I took it that you didn't like her, but hell, I was trying to figure out why she had on that awful green eyeshadow. I'm like, it was just everywhere. I couldn't, oh, I was like, Lord, are you an alien from outer space? I didn't like it. I didn't like it. I didn't like it. I was surprised you didn't say anything to her, okay? And uh, Drew, we must just, we just need to go on and tell you. Ralph don't want to adopt your child because to me it would have been a situation and many people may disagree with this but I'm just looking at it I'm a straight shooter and I just go for what needs to be said. Why you and your ex-boyfriend your baby daddy didn't come to agreement or you two worked it out or had a conversation on changing his son's name to your new husband's name. I think that should have been a conversation between you 
and his biological father okay not putting ralph in there to go and try to talk to him wanting to know is it okay that i adopt your son who in real life is gonna say yes they really care about their their children okay but for some reason they can't be uh they can't afford them or they just don't know how to be a parent themselves so they shy out and let the mother do all the work now drew um it seems like you got bamboozled hoodwink and uh gaslighted again once again by ralph your so-called husband honey i'm like he don't want this this he don't want to adopt your son drew he don't want that uh added pressure on him just as long as he's in the house with y'all and you know he get the same thing the other kids get you know it's amicably split up you know that's all he really wants he don't want to adopt that son he don't want to adopt your son well his your son okay oh lord i'm like are you trying to do an eva marcel that she wanted her eldest daughter to be named sterling and i'm still trying to figure that out or not yeah i think she did get, his, get her daughter's name changed to michael sterling's name uh because uh, the other dad he's kind of going a little psycho around there or something to that degree and he wasn't steady enough to be uh, a willing participant to uh even think about having a say or not to change his daughter's name to michael sterling's last name okay so i think you were just doing a little bit too much with that again uh ralph don't want to adopt your son he might have said it when he was drunk or he was just out of his mind at the time but no baby girl all the signs were there he did not want to uh adopt your child so get over it get it got it good okay uh and then again why you didn't say anything when these women were arguing about how ralph had presented himself in the book he's trying to write about uh co-parenting and parenting as a uh stepdad or something to that degree hell i didn't know what the book was talking about i don't plan on buying it and it probably ain't gonna be worth shit i'm just saying i'm just keeping it real from my point of view okay even a blind man could see uh that you was blindsided about the whole uh thing with the book and that you weren't or that ralph was not going to adopt your son and you felt like you needed to see uh, the book which i didn't know what the big secret was he could have let you read the first three chapters or four chapters just to get an eye feel and you probably could have went towards the end of it and see how things worked out but it seems like again he's gaslighting you he has no respect for you he's going to do what he needs to do whenever he wants to do it and you're going to be dumb enough to sit there and take it okay we're done with Drew, we're gonna go to Marlo, and then we're gonna go to Candy Girl. Well, no, let's go to Candy first. Candy, okay, we got Candy uh, again. Like I said, I don't know what in the hell Candy's um appetite is like. She's just, whoo, she just gotta have food all the time. She like she be big as a house, but I know she's um exercising here or there I, I, i'm pretty sure she's taking some weight loss supplements and things of that nature but the girl is just always damn hungry that's one thing we can all say as bloggers and people that really know candy uh like a hand foots in a glove the girl gots to eat okay i don't know where or how or, you know she might got snacks in her bedroom that she might wake up and be hungry who knows but yeah candy's more so hangry maybe we need to start calling candy candy hangry okay have you had your meal today but anyway we move on from there uh she didn't appreciate sonya and kenya wanting to stop and uh pick up a man in jamaica for kenya she was feeling kind of uh you know she was feeling kind of uh uh we call it angry about that but she knew she may don't need to uh, do anything towards hurting sanya's feelings but the girl was hungry okay and she made it very plain as day on the taping of that show okay um oh let's see can't say that i'm going okay oh uh, then okay okay let me see okay Kenneth also had told us that the resort they had found themselves at was very nice and uh very suitable for their stay because she went on and told us she had stayed there before <laughs> 
like, Candace, you don't stop your shit if you don't stop your shit. So she already known that the uh, the place was going to be beautiful inside. The rooms were going to be spectacular because she had already put her little money down there for some reason. Maybe her and Todd went to Jamaica for the hell of it. I don't, I don't know. Well, maybe she took the whole family over there, okay? But she was dropping dimes saying, yeah, she had... Uh, visited uh, this hotel that they were staying at and it's uh, kosher for her. All right, then we got um, I, Okay, then we got Candy talking of they fussing right about now her and Marlo and um, I'm like Candy you started this shit you did you started this shit, but you finished it baby You finished it with uh, glowing recommendations from me over here at Deb Chanel's 40s world you started it and you also ended it so i was glad about that i was glad about that but candy we needed to kind of uh understand when todd had said something about uh marlo had bought her way into the circle of friendship that you all have at the real housewives of atlanta house girl what he mean he bought her did he buy her uh, i mean did she buy her way in by buying gifts for phaedra or nene or any other cast members and you know, she kept begging to be on the show, you know, of some sort, friend of a friend or peach holder. Who knows? But uh, what does he, What can, can you get him to speak on it and, and tell us what he meant to say uh, when he said Marlo bought her way in? Because it's kind of perplexed. I'm perplexed about it and I don't like to be perplexed. I like to know what I'm talking about so I can have a conversation about it and I, I get it right. You know what I'm saying? So will you go back and speak on it or you could tell A1 if they can pretty much tell us what the hell Todd was talking about when he said Marlo bought her way in. Okay. Then we got, um, let me see here. Uh, somehow, uh, they going back and forth about, um, Marlo was trying to tell her about her husband, Todd, and, you know, Candy don't play about her man, she don't play about her food, and she damn sure don't play about her kids and her mama. Need to stay away from Mama Joyce. She don't like people talking about Mama Joyce, and Mama Joyce can talk about anybody she wants, and she don't say too much anyway. She, not, she might pat her mama hand and, or pat her on the hip or something. Mama, don't do that. Don't do that. You put me in some shit's field right now. You put, but, you know, Mama Joyce, she don't care. She got to speak on mind. She will speak on it, okay? Speak on it. Alrighty, and let me see here. Oh, and then, you know, she was, <laughs> she was telling Candy, uh, why do she let her mother belittle Toddy Tucker? Tim Tiny Todd Tucker is what we call him over here. Tiny Tim Todd Tucker. She asked Candy, plain as day and as loud as hell. Anybody could have heard her, could have heard her in the moon. Mars, Jupiter. Because she was talking that damn loud, okay? Raising the voice. And I'm like, post saying, she's just looking. And her husband was looking like, is we at a movie or something? Are they ever going to quiet down? Because they sure embarrassing the hell out of us. But anyway, oh, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, Candy had pretty much told her, you got to first get a man before you can tell me. <laughs> before you can tell me how to treat one. Okay, boo-boo. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit, now Candy finna get in her ass, and I like it, I like it. And then Marlo had said something about Candy not being known, but only here in Atlanta, okay, where it's greater indicator. Yes, uh, <laughs> she said that you only known in Atlanta. Don't nobody know you, girl. Candy got, woo. you know how you ask to breathe in deeply and then exhale, honey. Candy had came with a full roll, a roll of that shoulder, honey. And then she had to roll it all the way back and lean with it, rock with it, lean with it, rock with it, okay? Oh, my little ass. She said, baby, I'm internationally known. I was known to rock the microphone. <laughs> Oh, that was, I thought I would follow it on the floor when she said, girl, I'm internationally known. What the hell are you talking about? They know me in Japan. I'm like, get a can, get a girl, get a, get a, get a, get a girl. All right. And then somehow Todd and he got into it. You know, you know, like me and talking about the women. I die. I don't like it, but he was being okay with it. He been okay. But I, I really wanted him to just tag can and say, look, tell her, t tell her this. Did she know this? Or, or did she know you know, uh, I, 
I got new, I got some I got some business about her. I got some business. She don't want to go there now. If she say this, can you say this back to her? Okay, and I back her up because I say I was there. I know. I was with y'all in Africa. <laughs> Woo! But that was a hot mess. It was a hot mess. Now, we're going to get on Marlo ass. We throw him with candy. Okay, we're asking Marlo. Well, we don't care about the gay uh happy guy with the floors because he wasn't doing shit he was just maybe marlo owed him some money he was just marlo brought him on a trip to clear up that debt you know because we still trying to figure out where marlo get her money even though she said people should not be asking her that but hey we know what everybody else do we know what can you do we know sheree ain't got shit we don't know really what she do but she might be doing some stuff that marlo's doing and they just ain't feel the scene okay she might be selling the ooh we we don't know we could just allege we could just speculate all day long but sheree ain't gonna let us know about any of that but even though we know she, she about sheree ain't about shit either and we're gonna continue to not talk about it after this season is over with because she ain't bought it to fruition they already on tape they're gonna uh take the reunion on thursday from what my youtube um um, buddy Diane told me and uh, it's gonna be in New York too and I don't know have they ever had it out of Atlanta y'all you know I don't be paying too much attention I just get on here and talk uh shit all the time and if y'all like some of the crap I'm throwing y'all get into the comments but yeah they're supposed to be taping in New York I'm like is that a case settling thing or are they doing some uh what do you call it uh taking some deposition what do you call it De depo what they got? It ain't dissertation. It's um, uh, you know, you get the people's uh viewpoints and what they said. Deposition. That's where I'm going. Deposition. Is the girl supposed to be doing depositions up there or something for Nene's case that we got going on? I mean, why are they in New York? Why can't it be in Atlanta? Why can't it be in Atlanta? That's where it should start. Is where it should end. It okay? But anyway, no here, no there. Another here, no there. And uh, <laughs> for Marlo to always be asking what somebody else's man is doing what she heard out in them streets we're still trying to find out where the hell model man is. okay of course candy gave us you know a little she said some little white old man in a wheelchair or something like that to that degree but we ain't seen him we ain't seen him so we we, we don't know he, he must be visible or he must be really old and decrepit and he can't come out but Marla go over there and play with him you know get him tired out and then he put a, a couple of thousand in her uh, account you know for the services that she rendered all right mm, why did you say candy take care of her men and we all know candy can take care of anybody else she wants to she could take care of the whole world she could take um africa all the men over in africa and take care of them hell she got money why not she's open She's openly free with men and women, just as long as Todd know who she's getting it in with. And if he can get it in with her at the same damn time, meaning two women on one man, he the one man, he's all right for it. He's right for it. He's ready. He's ripe for the picking. Uh, but we really shouldn't be concerned about uh, Candy because Candy already done told us full fledged and full of uh, desire that she could take care of any damn man she wants to. She could take care of everybody in the whole room. At the time they were in, she could take out everybody. So don't be worried about that. Everybody be taken care of good. She need to worry about how she gonna get taken care of. Okay. Uh, and then um, Marla, why did you say Candy was only known in Atlanta? You know that was gonna be some big shit right there. I don't even know why you went for that. I told you to stop talking to Nene. Cause Nene gonna get you in a lot of trouble. You see what Nene at now, right? Okay. Do you really want to follow in her footsteps, Nene? Um, Marlo, do you really want to follow in her footsteps when you're coming uh, to battle with Candy? I don't think you do. You win. You, you know, you're not going to win. Mm -mm. No. And then she done dropped another single out here. It's just her and Tiny. It's like if you get caught cheating. I like that little metal now. I ain't like, the, you know, too many cuss words. But, you know, then I can get, you know, y'all can say the same thing about me. That you cuss too, but. Mm, I'm just talking about a song. It's like a diss song to the other song that Jermaine Dupri uh, and Jay-Z had released with some group called DSVN or some shit like that. I, I you know I talked to y'all about it. I think I did a video on it. Very disrespectful. Very disrespectful. But 
Candy and Tiny brought it on home. And that's like a new anthem for the women out there that are possibly getting cheated on. And they know they ain't got to take it. They just get on up and go and find them somebody else. Okay. And I'm like, damn, is it's, it's, uh, T.I. doing something on Tiny? Or is uh, Todd doing something that uh, Candy can didn't like? I'm like, y'all mess with two women. <laughs> well, we ain't going to say too much about uh, what's her name? Tiny, because we think her money all tied up with um, T.I. You know what I'm saying? Tiny had money before T.I., but, you know, T.I. just been doing too much. And, you know, I don't like T.I. really. I, Big Clifford the Red Dog, I, I don't like him, okay? I, he, he lost my respect when he kept getting bigger and bigger. And he started looking at people smaller and smaller, you know. And then his son was up there, and he was talking about, he don't know why his son was messing with the peasants, okay, or the help. Like, who? told you you were white babe and you had privilege written all over you but that's nothing here no there we ain't gonna talk about ti uh but todd uh you better watch yourself because can't already put out the anthem talking about if you get caught cheating and you didn't tell her you gonna be with this girl and she didn't get in and all the fun you might be your your, your clothes and wardrobes and other stuff might be sitting on the side of the uh community way when you come into y'all gated community it ain't gonna be right at the house she ain't gonna even let you come that far so watch yourself todd watch yourself and why Marlo, you keep calling todd bro why you keep talking to him? he ain't broke as long as he got candy he got full of money he got he got sea of oceans full of money as long as he got candy on his side he gonna always be good with his money and then again, why are you so worried about Candy and her job? I'm like, damn, she want to be like a Jamaican and work 10 and 12 jobs. Let that girl do what she got to do, okay? Only her. And the Lord can tell her when it's time for her to stop working all them damn jobs. But right now, she's striking while the iron's hot. And she getting in. She getting in because I'm telling you, she just dropped that album. A lot of say album. So it might be an album coming on. We don't know. But her and Tiny um, dropped that single. If you get caught cheating, Google it. Or YouTube it. I ain't too much like um, uh, the background and stuff. Because it's like red and some guy kind of smoky. I, I wanted a little bit more uh, clear vision. You know, where they were going with it. But we knew what the lyrics were saying. And, you know, like I said, hey, uh, Candy's about that uh, music world. So she's going to always prevail. Uh, whether she sound good or not. Because she was, really wasn't giving us those high vocals. She was, she was in her range. So... I love that she stayed in her range and she was kind of rapping and talking at the same time and she was doing her body language. I was like, okay, girl, all right, boss, I see you. I'll see you, boss, later. And Tiny, she was more doing the uh, soprano, alto type, you know, uh, runs with the voc vocals and it was beautifully done. So uh, we can say uh, salute Candy and um, Tiny for doing their own thing. I kind of uh, felt like it was a little diss because the Scott sisters weren't around. And I went in the comment section. A lot of people saying, oh, that'll be good. Y'all getting back together. Escape. Nah, this one no escape. This is a duo. <laughs> Candy self in a... I am going to close that window very quickly. And me and Tiny, we're going we gonna to do this because we could do it. They they both write music. And uh, Candy seems to have a good ear of what works. So, I don't think it's going to be too much more of a escape thing. It's going to be a Tiny and a uh, Candy situation. And one person in their chat when they was uh, under I Am Candy, I think it's where the video is. Uh, <laughs> they said when Tamika... Uh, Tiny was going to cut an album by herself. I was like, I don't know if Tiny can hold it all the way down by herself. I don't know. She just seemed like she needed a yin to her yang. Uh, she needed a frick to her frat. And it seems like she has that uh, well solidified in Candy. But hey, who knows? She might drop an album by herself. And Candy might try it again and drop one too. I don't know. But Candy's doing a good job by, you know, keeping that low octum type vocal going on and that rapping and that body language she was getting it she was getting it i was like okay i'm proud of you can i'm proud of you but anyway we go back to marlo uh <laughs> child marlo sat up there and said todd was talking to her about candy and todd said we're not talking to you and i'm like marlo you just you must say it you, you must have had too much to drink when you let that come out your mouth. Because, man, a blind man could understand and know you couldn't have been talking to Todd. He wouldn't talk to you like that, okay? He already was peeping game with you because he said you had bought your way into the clique. And I'm still trying to figure out what that truly meant. So, anybody know, put it down in the comments, okay? 
Oh, and then you start in on Candy about she took care of her nephews and Candy said, damn right. I sure did. I took care of them took care of them when they was babies and they still grown. If they need anything, she got it. <laughs> then they got it. So I'm like, okay, put 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 her down. You got her by the throat, Candy. You got her by the throat. Then you just need to uh toss her down, okay? And do that wrestling move and you know, she ain't gonna be able to get up, so you're gonna win that round, okay? Um, let me see. <laughs> you told everybody once again, you don't feel bad about sending uh your nephews away to your sister. Uh <laughs> you don't care who said it wasn't right, it was right for you at the time. I said, Yeah, keep on talking, keep on talking the defects, get that information, and you're not gonna be a guardian soon. Somebody people might even report you to uh defects here in Atlanta. Girl, you're doing too much. You're gonna end up like Nene out for the count and you you call yourself building a house i think you should have waited about three or four years being as a, a solid peach holder before making a drastic move such as that so i'm telling you, bravo must be paying these women good because they sure don't want to leave the show you know candy said she ain't going nowhere until bravo throw away <laughs> but she ain't finna try to do nothing to uh get out on the graces and the uh, revenue stream she gets from this platform okay and i'm like okay i see you can I, I mean hell i guess i wouldn't leave either if i was you know making my money here and making me some money over there and, and, and anywhere and all the streams coming back for me to cut an album with tiny or produce it <laughs> with her i guess i wouldn't leave either Okay, and then Marlo started talking about she was, uh, she, she's traumatized and all this shit. Like, Marlo, we don't want to hear the shit no more, okay? We, we personally over here, I think you used the kids of the storyline, and then it wasn't playing out the way you wanted it to play out, so you had to drum fire it up a little bit more. You had to throw them out for that scandalous type of sensation that, you know, everybody be having your name in their mouth and not can't, not having kenya's name in everybody's mouths and you just went forward but it went it went wrong it went it went south very quickly you couldn't catch up with it and it just blew up in your face pretty much is what happened you always saying you did you know you, you don't like how people give kids away or put them back in the foster system because you was in the foster system we tired of that marlo we don't want to hear that storyline no more this is the only time you have it is this season if you get a chance to come back the second season maybe you can redeem yourself but we damn sure don't want to hear you're traumatized because you in the foster system and this that and the third and i'm like <sighs> to me it's like you hate candy you have a really disdain hate for her and that's bad that's bad to hate somebody now to fuss with somebody and keep shit going that's another thing but it, when you have it really solidifying itself and cemented up to a true hate that's a bad uh that's a bad situ situation to be in and you not only hate her you hate Todd and mama joyce because of the references you made bringing mama joyce up was not something you should have done that's her mama and you know she uh fought with words tooth and nail with nene so i mean what what i mean it, you need to start listening to nene because again she's out you're in you don't want to be on the other end and i really think that um todd them really gave you a chance because you couldn't get on real housewives of atlanta at the time uh i think they weren't the the uh deal that they had worked out for you to have your own show or whatnot um talking about clothing or whatnot personally i think you didn't think you could handle it because the pieces that you wear some are quite ugly but i know they probably cost a whole hell of a lot of money and you want to think you know a lot about fashion but you haven't lived in paris you haven't lived in uh what do you call it, switzerland you i mean you know what i'm saying you haven't really truly lived or even tried to sit and watch people design clothes i'm talking about not on paper where they're sketching but i'm talking about the whole thing seeing the materials being put seeing the sewings the stitch stitching all that kind of stuff watch mahogany and uh watch down ross uh show you how to be in fashion do fashion and model fashion okay that's all i'm trying to say girl but yeah the disdain the hate that you have for candy mama joyce todd uh, you hate Candace's unit she has, her family, her friends, her environment. You hate it. You know, all of this has come out like a hate type thing. And, you know, I, I think we need to censor you or, or we need to sanction you. I keep saying we need to sanction you uh, because you, you're running amok. You're pretty much running amok. Um, 
And the part that she was saying something about um, Candy was belittling um, her husband Todd over Mama Joyce. Well, I, I, I tell you like this. <laughs> oh, mm, I, I just have to tell you, Candy's down for her family, period and point blank. She can have any man she wants. If Todd act up, how she made that song, if you get caught cheating, you know, um, fuck you and all that kind of stuff she was saying. You got to listen to the uh, lyrics and whatnot. But she said she, you could be replaced. It's almost like that in Beyonce's song, Irreplaceable. Yeah, 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 you could be replaced. So can I mean, uh, Todd can uh, uh, walk out on her if she want to or do something she, he ain't supposed to be doing. She's going to pack his bags and say, leave him outside at the gate. He ain't even going to be able to come uh up the driveway to get to the house that they uh share now no all his shit gonna be out there at the gate with the uh, guard and he's gonna be the guard's gonna give him his uh stuff and then he could tell him where he can pick up the other stuff because can gonna be done put it in storage okay somewhere close <laughs> but uh let me see uh is there anything else Hmm, hell yeah, and I don't understand why you call Canada a, a, a country bunkin. I mean, everybody that's born and raised here in Atlanta, we all are con- country bunkins. I mean, we, we fared it when we had that segregation going on. We, we had the Klan around here trying to, you know, do everything to black people and stuff. We had black power down here, but we it's a lot of people that went up to the north because they were scared they didn't want to be a part of it and you know we're the we're the true people we're the true people when you're born and raised here you know we have a little bit more hospitality we know what hospitality is now the people that be migrating here or come moving here because of better uh living conditions or uh they feel they're they're gonna prosper more monetarily here you know they coming from everywhere not to attend is up north somewhere and they bring in those attitudes. So you have to really do your due diligence and seek out folks that actually were born and raised in the South or in Georgia. And you're going to see they're very loving peach, uh, peachy type people. And they're, you know, they'll t- treat you like if you were family in a sense. Okay. I got enough of that. So that was my uh, review on the comings and goings of the real housewives of atlanta season 14 episode 13 i think it's like wrong punch to your gut i don't know i don't give a shit i just wanted to come over here and talk to you all about how marlo is letting uh nene run her and she's not even on the show anymore you know you know what i'm saying misery love company so you know she ain't on the show she want to be on somebody's show and pretty manyata man manyata uh we didn't really see a lot of her she's not really saying a lot she's more like cynthia you know playing switzerland she don't know which way to go but (coughs) if she's been watching the show she should know which way she's gonna go so we had to get rid of somebody and bring her on well we can she can get a little bit more time I would say let's throw Sheree away. Let's throw Sheree away because she she's not doing anything. She's not bringing sh- that that clothing line. I ain't even gonna mention the name no more. Uh, cause it landed amongst the stars. <laughs> she shot for the moon and missed it, but she looked. You know, she, the name was uh synonymous, and we will always uh attach her to that. But, you know, she ain't got to worry about bringing us no fashions. We don't care anymore over here at Deb Chanel's 4 Days World. Uh, we don't care. Okay. She's she been playing with us for too long. Uh, and not have brought things to fruition on her clothing line or or jogger or athletic wear line or hell, whatever you want to call it. Okay. But she's been sporting shit uh, with the uh, logo and her name of her product but uh or the name of her company but we ain't seen no fashions for people to monetize her and keep her in the lux um lack of luxury she's been accustomed to okay running around there with ten dollars what she said was ten thousand dollars for a chandelier and candy had put her out i said that guy said candy you ain't got no damn sense you ain't shit candy sitting up there trying to blow the whistle on the girl you know she probably doing that agriculture stuff girl allegedly but that's all i got for this video guys and i'll see y'all next time bye bye